Welcome back to the counter offer. I haven't said that one in a while. This is going to be the weekly news. We're coming today on a Wednesday, which is wonderful. It's not like you'd know if it's a Wednesday, Wednesday or Thursday. We don't have 2,000 viewers yet. Um, it's very interesting in the market. You know, we make calls every single morning talking to buyers and sellers, and then we read the news, and there's sometimes a disconnect on what we read and what we are actually seeing in the market, and we kind of want to give our spin to it. So I'm going to go first, and this is actually Europe. There is a $55 billion funding gap in commercial real estate loans. Around one in five loans backing commercial real estate in Britain, France, and Germany that fall due between now and 2025 are likely to face refinancing challenges given the higher interest. $55 billion funding gap. Um, and that's the whole, that's multifamily, residential offices, industrial, and everything else. You really do feel for a lot of these commercial loans that are coming due in the next, say, now until, as it says, 2025, there's going to be a big funding gap on getting the money that they can, their cash flow, um, giving back to investors, and pricing. You know, what is it worth? You know, yeah. you know, it's going to be really interesting. And that's Europe. So it's not just the United States. It's not just New York City. It's not just L.A. or anything else. I know on The Real Deal, which is on the Instagram, I, I see it all the time on how many people are posting about commercial real estate. I think it's the most that I've ever seen. It's, it's a big focus One of right now. One is on commercial real estate. Yeah. But I decided to not go into the morbid articles okay, good. until later. But I would <laughs> say that... Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, well, maybe the Federal Reserve should raise rates. That'll help. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> then they'll be able to refinance at a better price. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> what's funny, too, is that in San Francisco, which clearly for the longest time was the hotbed of commercial office, we have this beautiful space, they're going to get crushed. And they're going to have to do what New York City is going to do, which is convert it to residential. So it's very interesting that you look Which is an at opportunity. all of the funds, all the rates, and what matters is these adjustable rates. Yep. They have rates that reprice to whatever the market rate is. And so that means even if you bought a couple of years ago with the idea that rates were going to be lower for longer, then you know now that's a complete surprise and you are going to have to refinance. And do you have the income? from the tenants, you know, three years from now, yeah. from those uh, commercial spaces in Europe, those those rents are gonna come due. Yep. Those people are going to uh, renegotiate. They're either gonna leave, you know, there's gonna be a, a gap. And unless something happens, those are going to be sold at a significant discount. Yeah, and which is an opportunity. I know there's a lot of buyers out there, say bigger funds that are definitely looking forward to that time. The first part and the second part, ironically enough, it's kind of the opposite in residential. The reason people are not moving is because they're going to buy at a higher interest rate than what they actually have. And if they refi, you know, I was just talking with someone who's a tenant and the owner is forced to sell because they bought it at a seven year arm and now it's coming due and it's like triple what they locked in seven years ago in a seven year arm. So they're forced to sell. So it's a very interesting market. Um, but Europe is definitely a place that you really want to be putting a lot of focus to because um, it, it will be interesting what what happens in the coming months and years. Okay. On to yours. Yeah. Well, I have a great article. It was short, sweet, and I'll just give you the highlight. Last Thursday, the uh, metro system, the subway here, had the highest ridership wow. since March 12th of 2020. Wow. So I remember on March 12th, I believe that was a Thursday, I took the subway down to one of my showings and everybody was freaking out. They were saying, what's going on around here? I'll never forget that subway ride. And uh, then, you know, I was riding the subway during the quarantine and stuff, but it was empty. You yeah. know, and they used to have these teams go in and yeah. clean it out. Yeah. Uh, however, it's amazing. For, uh, I, I've seen it all over the city. It is like busy out. It's yeah. busier out than I've ever noticed 100%. Uh, since COVID. 
Uh, yeah. There have been, you know, those tourist times where people show up and this and that, and there's times where you're thinking, wow, this is really busy. But it was not a surprise to see that article that just said, wow, ridership in the subway is up higher than it has been since the pandemic. And uh, there are so many people that don't pay. I would imagine that it's even higher. Yeah. So beforehand, there were five... 0.1 million rides per day now it's at about four wow but that is still a record and it was two weeks in a row that it broke the record well so, we've noticed it oh yeah we've well, talked about it there are so many people that drive into the city now as well uh you know you look at the uh when i when i'm walking around and there's garages in the morning there are like lines that to is the place to invest garages. to be honest yeah, oh my goodness they are charging so much money yeah. overnight rates monthly rates and they are packed packed they have no space it's crazy yeah so uh i said that yesterday i was like i took the bus i couldn't get across town it was so much traffic and there were so many people yeah. Yeah. going to hotels it's like New York City is mobbed right now. I agree. Yeah. And the, some of the times the subway is packed. And, you know, everybody on the news, the real news is going to be like, oh, New York City, is it safe? And this and that. It's like when there's four million people riding the subway on a daily basis, like I feel much better yeah. than it was during the quarantine when yeah. it was just like me and one crazy person. Yeah. And on I'm the like subway. looking around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, You're the only person to yeah. talk to. <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, but now, you know, uh, there's one thing, I guess I'll digress real quick. One thing I've always loved about New York is that if something is going on, if you're not feeling well or somebody's like kind of uh, off, somebody's there to step in yeah. to like see if you're good. Yeah. And like New Yorkers look out for one another. They might have a tough attitude, but they're they're there for one hundred percent. So yeah. All right. Well, moving on to talking about the news. The title is Three Things to Know About the Media Exaggeration on the Real Estate Market. What a title. The media exaggeration, and we see this all the time, is that it's a clickbait headline, and then that's all you read. I actually see this on the subway. Someone's scrolling by, and they just scroll to the headline. They don't read the article. Well, and not. and you've said that a couple <laughs> of times. I read the article, and this is what it was about. So the, so these are the three. Punishing qualified home buyers which means that you are essentially saying to home buyers that um, there's not enough, uh, you know, the, the market isn't good. So a qualified home buyer is getting this news downloaded into them saying the market isn't good in certain areas when in fact it's the right time to buy in certain areas if you're a buyer because there's no competition in a lot of areas, the it's going down. I just had a text literally this weekend where a buyer qualified was like, the market isn't good. I'm like, that's when you buy. You don't buy when it's really hot. So it's like you're getting the news that the market isn't good. Yes, that's when you buy. That's the first thing. The second thing is the news of the market death is greatly exaggerated, 100%. There's enough people in New York City. It's you're not putting in 10 or 15 percent below the asking price there's more single people than ever there's not enough houses so this whole thing about the market death is greatly over exaggerated it's like is it going to go down yes but is it going to crash like everyone is talking about not in residential and the third and this is very interesting is inventory does not equal demand this is very important because a lot of people think there's only 23 homes and they think that low demand is that there's not a lot of buyers, but actually that means there's an overabundance of buyers. And that's why there's only 23 homes in your search or 14 homes in your search. So a lot of people think it's not a good market. There's not a lot of homes together uh, um, to buy, so I'm not gonna buy. So I thought that was a well, you know, put together article on, on the media exaggeration. I just spoke a lot. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think that's like the, I mean, I'll have to read the article, but I think that is like the reason that we do this. Yeah. <laughs> that could be like the, you know, the defining article of this real estate show, because yeah. it is unbelievable sometimes to read these headlines. And sometimes you read the headlines and the actual article contradicts the headlines. Yeah. Like, you, you wonder if it's, it was just a reason to get them to read the article yeah. or if the, what the message they were trying to send was. But, uh, you know, you have to just kind of like, 
I don't know. What do we talk about? Block you have to news. work with a good <laughs> professional. And yes, block out the news. Like right now, we're, we're working with people that either have to sell, want to sell, but then we move to buyers and there's a lot of good buyers that are qualified and ready for the opportunity. They've been, they're smart. They've gone through this before. They're blocking out all the nonsense. They're not going on any of the news organizations to tell them what to do. And those are the people that um, make the most money because yes, it's a higher rate, but if you get it at a much lower price with no competition and your cash, and then you refi in the future, it's, you know, anyway, that's, well, that was right. interesting to me. So we already talked about commercial real estate, so I'll keep it brief. But uh, this is Manhattan, not Europe. A bleak outlook for Manhattan's office space may signal a bigger problem. Remote work and rising interest rates have dealing a double blow to office landlords with potentially grave consequences for the city and even the national economy. Was that written by ChatGBT? <laughs> oh my gosh. Please and as so many adjectives as possible. It was by the uh, New York Times. Who, okay. And Same thing. The other, the, the crazy thing is, this article was posted, I don't know, April 25th, so yesterday. Wow. 617 comments. On a commercial <laughs> real estate post, that's wild. That must have been on the front page. I mean, that's nobody, crazy. like that is... I've never seen that for a commercial that real estate. That is how opinionated yeah. everybody is on yeah. this commercial real estate topic. Yep. Uh, you know, just a side note, I listened to the SL Green earnings call that came out a couple weeks ago. And SL Green is that uh, office landlord that yep. everybody thinks about, that public company that everybody's always watching, that kind of like epitomizes New York City office real estate. And it was grim, but there were also some very good notes in there as well. Yeah. So, you know, yes, I think everybody knew actually sitting in quarantine in March of 2020 that the office market was going to change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it, is it like nobody's ever going to go back? No. But, uh, you know, it's also not going, it's not going to be the worst. It's also not going to be the best. The problem is, which they outline in this article, is that a lot of those real estate loans are from small to mid-size uh, banks. And that is the story of the economy, is that these small, mid-size banks are, you know, the ones who loaned out on these commercial properties who are taking a huge hit. So ultimately, those small and regional banks are going to be the ones who take the hit. Yeah. And maybe go out, you know. Yeah. You own, you you always, you know you kind of wonder like, is it on purpose for acquisitions? Keep the rates high, and then we can acquire. Like, you know, it's it's one of those things that you look long term and you say, what is because commercial real estate is massive. That is tri probably trillions of dollars because you just think of uh, across the board. It's not just. Uh, retail, it's not just office, it's just anything that's not residential is owned for commercial use. And it will be interesting to follow this. And SL Green is a gigantic management company well, think about, here in the city. Yeah, and their stock is big time down, but it's not like First Republic Bank. I know. First Republic Bank was $100 and now it's 8 Really? And that was in about a month. Wow. And I've done I a actually lot seen of them. real estate yeah. mortgages, re residential yeah. like that. Yeah, they made a big push into Manhattan in the last 10 years. And they've originated a lot of loans, a lot of, you know, and, and to be honest, I actually just got an email from someone from First Republic is, <laughs> ironically enough. <laughs> oh, so really? they they're trying that. to, yeah, they're, they're looking for leads. They're looking for real estate agents. Everywhere you go, actually, I have now noticed, you know, how they're many advertising. offices there are. Yeah. So. Yeah, there's a big banner in Chelsea. The, the thing has to be twenty to thirty thousand dollars a month. It's on the West Side Highway, <laughs> and it's on the Chelsea Piers. And I I run by it, and I'm like, how much money is that? When it that's rains, like, it pours. Yeah, when that's it's gonna be. there's like three locations: Soho, West Side Highway, and Times Square is where the billboards you want to have it. 
they're all owned by Clear Channel or. Well, you, you know, know who's going to end up buying those banks? The big banks. Yeah, exactly. So they're gonna they're go just going to get absorbed. They're going to go out of business, yep. and then they're going to be absorbed. Which I don't business. like that, you know, because then the competition not. doesn't. It really doesn't not. flow. You know, and that's why they existed in the first place. You don't go to the big bank to get the loan. You go to these uh, smaller. Yep. Shops. So, yeah. Anyway. Well, that's it for the news. Uh, I thought those were some great articles, and to be <laughs> honest, more positive than we normally are. Sometimes uh, uh, this one brings in one that no, we're always going to be positive about yeah. the news, no matter what. When you read these headlines, you know there is always a positive outlook you can have. There's always an opportunity. That's where I'm sure yeah. I'm going to read through some of these 617 comments. Please take screenshots and send them over. I want to know do, the top ones. What I should do is have ChatGPT go through all of them and say, Give me a summary. Which one is, how many are positive and how many yeah. are negative? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 615 were negative. <laughs> and Charles and Eric had positive comments. <laughs> we love it. All right. Well, enjoy your day and we'll.